Ladies and gentlemen, we go now to the one and only Jacob Kelly, who just yesterday hosted Smokedown Prohibition in Youngstown, Ohio. He joins us now for a recap on that event. And if you were checking out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Adam Kokish, you can see his uh, interview he did for a local news station, which he did such an awesome job representing the cause and Adam versus the man with an AVTM t-shirt. But uh, I'm dying to hear. <laughs> Jacob, thank you so much for calling in at the end of the show here. I am, I am dying to hear how exactly this went down and how you are not in jail right now. Okay. So what happened was that on Thursday, right after I got interviewed by you here uh, on your show, I got a call from the local police that they are going to and they basically what they said is that they're going to arrest anybody that shows up for the protest in because they said that we are in violation of city ordinance 541.16 which is uh, trespassing on a public place of amusement they said <laughs> that the whole park was rented out for a family event that day which was not true according to the park administrator that was interviewed in that video but more importantly, I want to point out that this is essentially uh, a promise to arrest you for a thought crime. Now, like, just, just, uh, right. like, just untangle this for just a second here. If you, we're going to arrest anybody who shows up to the park with the intent of joining a protest. Not for protesting, not for engaging in protest behavior, not for expressing themselves, but if they show up with the intent of being a part of this protest, we're going to arrest them. Now... I, I also have to point out that it's been demonstrated or, or the Supreme Court has ruled that police don't have to tell you the truth at all. They're, they have no obligation yeah. legally to not lie to you, that a cop lying to you has no liability for what they say. So if they say we're going to arrest you, they, it can be an idle threat. And within the color of the law, that's totally legitimate. Please continue. That, yes. What you just said was completely true. It was a lie. Nothing of that occurred. And I was, because I was even told the day before on Saturday, I met with another officer and he told me directly into my face, face to face conversation, that anybody that sets foot into the park will get arrested. So I kind of, at that point, I kind of believed them. I did believe them, but I wasn't going to back down from the event. So I just told everybody on the page that, oh, this is what the police said. There's a threat of possibly that happening. It. I'm changing this to a First Amendment right kind of thing. And a lot of people did message me back on Facebook and said, I cannot risk arrest and I cannot show up. Now, hold on a second. I want, I want to, if I may interrupt just for a little comment yeah, yeah, yeah. here on this. You made a, uh, I, I want to commend your tactical decision here because you you set out with the intent of engaging in civil disobedience for marijuana where you were willing to risk risk arrest to make yes. the point this wasn't part of a specific campaign to change the law this was you want to raise awareness you want to make a point you're willing to make a sacrifice and take a risk in order to do that and in the process of doing that realize that even the fundamental right to protest was not being respected in your community and you decided to yes. say you know what let's fall instead of instead of you know lobbing bombs deep behind enemy lines and hoping that we we break through somehow you're saying like no there's a fight right here that is more immediate and fundamental that is even more righteous that we have an immediate chance to win and i think that was a, a wise tactical decision yes thank you so much because i got a lot of heat from my friends and from the police officers that i know calling me a bitch and calling me out for not actually doing the whole full-scale event because I when they said that they're gonna arrest us for being in a park I prepared for it I got a lawyer that I was gonna contact over it I uh, emailed you about it so you could cover it on 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 mm -hmm. air and I, I, I made sure I even contacted my professors that I might not be in class because I will get arrested for setting foot in park so I planned accordingly to what the police said when we got there, none of the police showed up. <laughs> there were no police to be seen anywhere. So we went on with the event. I gave some speeches. We had about 20 people there. And uh, because I was expecting to get arrested for being in the park, I did not have 
marijuana on me since I was just uh, a 20 year old and uh, with no money. So I just wanted, I was going to take one charge and fight that one charge fully. So, but instead, this lady, really cool lady, had weed cookies with her. So uh, when the police finally showed up at 4.15, expecting us all to smoke, I went and I tried to shake their hands and they wouldn't. And I just said that, uh, thank you for coming and being a supporter of the cause or whatever, whatever. And I ate a weed cookie in front of them. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get arrested for that. And, uh, Did you tell them what it was? What was that? Did you tell them what it was you were eating? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just, All right. I just, so you went yeah. ahead in, in a covert way with that part of the civil disobedience. But no, this is, this is, this is wonderful. And, and I want to point out that you know, the point of civil disobedience is not to get arrested. The point of civil disobedience is to raise awareness and change policy. Yes. And, yeah. and what you did was an incredible act of defiance that, that was civil disobedience because while not against the law, it was against law enforcement to go to the park for an unpermitted protest. And by unpermitted, yes. obviously, you know what we mean. Permitted certainly under the First Amendment of the Constitution, which you so pointed so well pointed out in that interview that, that, we, uh, that we featured on our channel. And uh, as, as you pointed out when you first mentioned uh, your, your approach to this, and uh, you, I think you've established yourself now as someone in your community who can be expected to take that stand, who can be a leader, who can stand up to the, to the authorities. And the authorities now know you as a guy who's peaceful and nonviolent and respectful and, and who can conduct something like this in a way that is uh, befitting the message of freedom. Yes, exactly, because everybody that attended said that they had a great time. I'm happy I got to meet other libertarians, other pro-marijuana people, and it was a good get-together. And also, I do plan uh, to uh, write a thank you note to the local police department, and I will thank them for not arresting us and being part of it. And I would express my, my gratefulness to them that they acted peacefully as well that day. Now, I have to admit, I've been trolling your Facebook page today because I was hoping that you would post some more video or, or some, some more updates about what happened. You have video coming, right? Yes, I okay. do have a video of it, but it's not that really exciting because I really wanted the police to come and encroach on us and try to arrest. Well, I didn't want it, but that was the plan to come and arrest us for being in the park, but that didn't happen. And uh, also, we had a very because of that threat, people were scared, and we had a uh, lower attendance. We had like 18 people come out of the 60 that said they would come. Well, actually, by Facebook numbers, that's pretty good. But I, I want to point out something yeah. very specific, because I noticed yeah. your father is, is on your Facebook page, and he seems yeah. generally very supportive of what you're doing, correct? Yes, that is true, and uh, that is awesome, because uh, a lot of, I was expecting, a lot of my family really don't condone a lot of what I do, but my dad, I think, over time, I have convinced him to become a libertarian and a voluntarist, and he is now supportive of it, and he sees the evilness of the government that he failed to see before. Excellent. Well, there's one thing I'd like to point out, because your dad did say something, as I noticed in, in his general message of support, that to me as a libertarian was extremely offensive. Do you, can you guess what it was? Not sure. No, not sure. All right. Well, since you didn't respond to call your dad out, I'm going to do it right here on the air. Hopefully this will, will help him a little bit okay. in, his, in his journey into uh, and cappiness. And he said that you didn't protect the First Amendment. The police stood up and protected free speech and the First Amendment. And now neither of those are, are legitimate possibilities. You as an individual cannot protect the First Amendment. It is words on paper. That's all it is. You can stand up for the principles behind it. You can assert your own rights to express yourself, but you, you cannot defend words on paper. And not only did the police not do that, they did not stand up for any of those principles. They showed up on stolen funds, so uh, paying their salaries and for their mm -hmm. equipment and for their costumes and their weapons. And they showed up to exercise and be a represent, you know, the will and the power of the state and represent the politicians that guarantee them their jobs. They did not protect, if, if someone had been threatening you, if someone said, Jacob, 
I disagree with your protest, and I'm just going to come and shoot all of those damn hippies when they come and gather in the park. And if the cops came and stopped them, then you could say, yes, the cops were protecting your expression. They were protecting your physical integrity there in the park in that moment. They were standing up for your right to exist peacefully. But that was not the case. The, yeah. In fact, the only potential threat was the police. And while the fact that they backed down in that circumstance is commendable and to be celebrated, they weren't protecting shit. Yeah, I, I cannot agree more with that. And uh, <laughs> I will definitely send what you just said, the audio file, to my dad. <laughs> see what he has to say. All right, I'm sure that's something you would have no problem helping him out with on your own. You don't need my help there. But um, you can, if, if you have to be like, well, uh, Adam had a little response for you today. Maybe you can use that as a conversation starter. But obviously, <laughs> he's, uh, you're, you're very fortunate to have the support of your family in this, at least your father, and, and to know that you have someone who's going through that process, and hopefully he'll bring uh, the rest of the family with him. Yeah, definitely, because uh, I, I've been in a lot of arguments with my family, and a lot of arguments have been pro-statist from their side, so hopefully they're seeing past the status paradigm and getting into it because I want my my beliefs and uh, my family's beliefs to be together so we can stand together and make a one kind of group of unique libertarians against the state and we can call ourselves the Kelly family number <laughs> two or whatever. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us, Jacob. Really appreciate it. Best of luck. We look forward to your videos coming out of this event and uh, you know, we, we know that you're going to continue this activism and keep setting an example for, yes. for other listeners. Appreciate the little sneak attack you have. You want to have a serious discussion about monetary policy? Get yourself prepared for the conversation. It starts with a global run on the banks. That's completely bonkers. The working class does not get hurt by inflation. 